Hello everyone, Happy New Year. We're starting 2016 with a look at nonprofits themselves. I'm Wendy Brokaw and this is Ross Sutherland. Hi, you also work for a nonprofit. I do. That's I do. Wonderful. I'm the director of the Bush House Museum, which is a program of the Salem Art Association. Well, that's wonderful. And we also have with us Phil McCorkle. Now, he heads a relatively new nonprofit by the name of the Center for Community Innovation. And mm -hmm. you have a long history, Phil, with nonprofits. You were with Marion Polk Food Chair for what? Wearing different hats for something like what, 19 years? 19 years. And before that, I was with Northwest Human Services for five years. Wow. And Somewhere in the middle there, I left Marion Polk Food Share and went to work for another nonprofit, Regis High School, for three years. So, yeah, 29 years working in nonprofits. Wow. So, the Center for Community Innovation is a new idea for the Mid Valley because mm -hmm. uh, there apparently was a need for a nonprofit to help other nonprofits. What's that all about? Yeah, that's a great question. So, there were a lot of things that nonprofits were encountering that were challenging them to be able to stay stable and continue to help the community. Things like just the changing in society that kind of meant that they needed to change their, their mission, the things that they were doing in order to stay relevant. Relevance being important because if you're going to retain donors, you kind of have to keep your donors happy. Mm -hmm. And so that, that would be one example. And then just being able to run your nonprofit more like a, a business and, and understanding the, um, the way everything fits together with your cash flow and you know the, your expenses and balancing everything. And not all nonprofits get the kind of training that they need in order to be prepared to do that. So what do you do? Well, we, we do a number of different things to directly address some of those needs. And first, and probably foremost, we provide training opportunities for nonprofit leaders, staff, and board members. Mm -hmm. um, just for a, a detour on the board member issue, uh, I've been talking with a bunch of executive directors from local nonprofits, and something over 50 of them by now. And they've all identified the need to train board members as being one of the most uh, pressing needs that they have because they estimate that probably something less than 5% of board members at nonprofit organizations have had any training whatsoever about what it means to be a good, effective nonprofit board member. And when you think about the fact that there are over 2,000 nonprofits here in the Mid Valley. Mm -hmm. 2,000 That's a lot of board members <laughs> yes. who uh, who are leading these organizations, you know, setting their course, their vision for the future, mm -hmm. and yet most of them haven't had training. So that's w finishing that thought then. Uh, training being a pretty important thing that we do. Uh, second thing that we do is we try to increase collaboration and networking among nonprofits. Uh, very early on in my uh, nonprofit career, I figured out there was one heck of a lot that I didn't know. <laughs> and it wasn't hard. And uh, so, it just occurred to me that if I would get to know other people who were doing the same kind of work mm -hmm. that I was, then any time I got stuck, I always could pick up the phone and ask somebody for help. And over, over the years, that really served me well. We want to encourage more of that. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we do something that makes us pretty unique, and that is we try to increase just community-wide involvement with nonprofits. So if you think about nonprofits and two things that they pretty much all need. It's volunteers and donations. So we're working specifically to try and increase community-wide volunteerism and participation in philanthropy. And then how, how specifically does CCI work with the nonprofits to, to, uh, to educate them and improve their services? So we would... Um, offer things like um, we've got a nonprofit resources library that people can come in and use whenever they need it. Uh, those you know, include traditional resources mm -hmm. like DVDs and, and books, but they also uh, also include online resources because after all it is 2015, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. almost 2016. So if it isn't online, it's not real, right? Yeah. Um, we <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Um, we also uh, just try to provide some help as far as like if a nonprofit gets stuck, mm -hmm. they can call us and we'll try to provide some consulting, some advice, mm -hmm. some helps like that. Um, as far as the uh, fundraising uh, piece, we, we do things like uh, 
there, there's a, a column that I'm doing for the Statesman Journal that, that talks about various ways that people can be smarter donors and ways that nonprofits need support mm -hmm. and ways that the community can get to understand nonprofits better so that it, again, it, it reduces that gap, that barrier between the donors and the nonprofits. There are a number of donors that aren't at this gigantically wealthy mm -hmm. level. And are you, how mm -hmm. are you trying to engage them? Well, I, one thing is just to let people know how important their support is mm -hmm. and that somewhere in the nonprofit world there's a place for them to plug in. I mean, if I tell people sometimes that if I were to go to the first or you or I would go to the first 10 people that we see when we leave this room mm -hmm. out on the street and ask them to think of 10 nonprofits that probably they're going to end up kind of on this end of the continuum and they're going to think about nonprofits that are doing things like fighting hunger and homelessness and that's important but what gets left off is the other end of the continuum the arts you know mm -hmm. music things that improve just the quality of life that make this a better place to live. And then there's all these other nonprofits along that continuum that are out there every day working on their various areas and that make this a great place to live. And I think people are also on this kind of continuum, each of us is, and we have our interests. And some people are interested in fighting hunger and homelessness and great, they can plug in with the nonprofits here. Mm -hmm. But then there are other people who care about music, they care about art, and they could plug in here. And everywhere in between, you know, educational institutions, hospitals, you know, all down the line. And somewhere there's going to be somewhere, some organization, nonprofit, that could use their help, either by volunteering, by giving funds, by giving in-kind donations. And so if we help people realize that, and that gifts and their time of any amount or any size, that helps nonprofits, and so they do have a place to plug in, then I think we begin to increase the community's desire and, and uh, motivation to be involved. The, and the, the great thing about that too is, is, is you really see overlap where you'll see somebody that will volunteer at a museum, but they're also active with with hunger or they're mm -hmm. working with different like f with uh, hum with uh, human with resources. human resources yeah, I was th yeah. I was thinking um, the um, helping hand resources that exactly. you know they'll work there so that that's the other thing that's really wonderful and also in their in their philanthropy is that you'll see people who will be members of multiple nonprofits Definitely. and so the people at the symphony are also the people that are donating mm -hmm. um, either you know possibly through their church or um, through social services or something. So it's a really kind of, that's a, the wonderful thing about Salem is is people sort of are connected m in a lot of different ways. And I CCI agree. wants yeah. to enhance that connection. Definitely. Is that what makes you unique? I mean, there are a lot of organizations out there, face it, that are trying to help nonprofits succeed. So what makes yours so unique? Mm -hmm. So What makes there you are stand examples. out from the crowd here? Yeah, that's a great question. There's, there are examples of, of other organizations, for instance, that provide training for nonprofits. And unfortunately, a lot of them, you have to drive to Portland to get that training. And that can be a real barrier mm -hmm. for our local Mid-Valley sure. nonprofits. So one of the things that we try to do is to reduce that barrier, make it accessible and affordable for all of our area nonprofits so that they can benefit from that knowledge and that training. Um, but what really makes us unique is that when you, when you look for an organization, a nonprofit, that seeks to help all mm -hmm. other nonprofits, that's pretty hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, I, in the fundraising area, for instance, I tried to find one for quite some time. I almost convinced myself that there wasn't another one in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Finally found one in, I think it was Austin, Texas, <laughs> that has a similar kind of a mission to help all fundraising across all nonprofits. and. Uh, so they're, they're, we're pretty uncommon, and that really does make us pretty unique. So um, what is ahead for CCI and the vision for the future? So we have all kinds of dreams, and, <laughs> and our, our challenge is that, that we have a really small staff. And so um, one of the ways that we're going to be able to, I think, achieve some of those dreams mm -hmm. and, and some of the additional things that, that we want to be able to do is to realize that we can't do it all. Yeah. And so we have this philosophy of partnering with other organizations. 
And so if you think of any other nonprofit mm -hmm. that represents multiple nonprofits, then we're looking for ways to get involved with them. So examples of that would be like the Salem Leadership Foundation, mm -hmm. United Way, uh, Mid Valley Volunteer Managers Association, a group called the Center for Nonprofit Stewardship, Willamette Valley Development Officers, Nonprofit mm -hmm. Association of Oregon. We know we can't do it all. So by working together, which by the way, we're encouraging other nonprofits to do the same thing. So if we didn't do it ourselves, it would be rather ironic. So uh, it really is part of what we want to do, and we realize we can do a whole lot more by doing that. How do we get in touch with you? Well, the easiest way is probably by our website, and it's a pretty simple web address. It's ccioregon.org. ccioregon.org. Okay. Right, and all of our contact information, of course, is there. You know, you really seem to have a passion for this. I just, you know, where does it come from in you? You're writing articles, you're getting people mm -hmm. involved. Why? You know, I've seen it work. I've seen nonprofits make a difference for this community where I mm -hmm. live and that I care about. And so I know the difference that people can make by getting involved with nonprofits, and it's just natural for me to want to share that and <laughs> encourage other people to get involved. It's just the way it is. That's well, great. it's catching, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. We're yeah. going to have to have you back one oh, of these I'd times. Oh, I'd be glad to. Give that us, would be great. Give us an update on, on the projects that you've got going Definitely. and uh, new ways we can get involved and okay. feel that connection that you've talked about. That so. would be great. I would love to do it. Well, thank you for joining us today on Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Ross Sutherland. We'll see you again.